Hello, hi everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to transform an ordinary bar chart, like what you see on the left, to a fancy retail bar chart on the right. This is especially helpful when you're trying to do some kind of dashboard and you want to make the data visualization more fun and more insightful. Um, and it doesn't require a higher level Excel. I believe that you can do this with just simple bar chart in Excel 2013 and above. Um, I'm going to show you how to do that and I'm going to show you how you can use template to easily transform that for additional sets of data. So let's now get started. Uh, this is raw data that we currently have. Uh, the scenario is very simple. We have five departments. We have the Q1 performance scorecard and Q2 performance scorecard. So in order to do the ordinary bar chart, you just go to insert um, the ordinary bar chart and then you can just do them uh, pretty easily. So let's park that on the site. And then now let's try to do this with the riddle bar chart. So to do that, you actually first need to create a helper column. Uh, you can, you, I call it a helper column, you can call it whatever you like. And then you need to choose uh, a number to start with. So for some, if it's percent, you start with 100%. For my scorecard, uh, because I have a number that's over 100, so I decide to use 150 as the full um, score. And then you have at 150, the full score, minus the performance score you have, and then you have a helper uh, column. And actually, let's copy that, the same thing for Q2, because we're going to use that later. So, um, and then this is basically your data set. So select all the uh, columns, go to insert, um, and actually go to pie chart. I can go to all charts and then go to pie chart. And then in the pie chart, you go select donut chart. And in donut chart, they offer you two options and select the one on the right. So this is the chart that we start with. So now basically we just need to, the next step is to format it uh, as uh, desired. So first I prefer to get rid of the legend. And then next select your chart. Um, and then uh, right click format data series. You're gonna see the series options on the right. So the angle of the first slice basically shows you where this line starts. So you see now it starts on the top. Let's say I wanna start it at the bottom. Um, then what you do is change this to 180 degrees. And then you see your data will start from the bottom and goes all the way here um, clockwise. Or if you say, I actually want to start it from here, um, then what you do is to change it to 270 degrees. And you can see the chart basically just starts from here. So you can customize in that way. For my purpose, I choose to start from zero. So that's where my blue bar starts. Um, and the next thing you can select is basically how big you want the hole to be. So for my purpose, I prefer to make it smaller. So I'm actually making it 30. Uh, you can customize in whatever way you need. So this is how the chart looks like right now. The next step I need to do is to add my uh, label to it. So to do that, um, I go to add chart element, data label, and then I go for more data option or show. Actually show is okay for me. And then I need to do some kind of a customization. And this is actually one of the more manual step. So basically, for example, for what I'm having here, I need to select each of those labels um, and then change it to whatever format I want. So for example, I choose to have Arial. Um, I wanna make it slightly bigger. Um, and I bold it. So uh, I choose to have red, uh, white because I have blue on the back, back end. So I basically have to do the same thing for all my data. Yeah, okay, so now the blue bars are ready, the labels are ready, and what I like about the label is that it's dynamic. Because for example, if in the middle of preparing this dashboard report, um, business came to us to say, you know what, actually our um, performance score changed, HR is actually changed to 85. Um, you know what, what you need to do is basically just change it in the source data and then the chart will automatically update so that you don't need to 
um, revise the chart itself. So I like it to be dynamic that way. And then the next thing to do is to get rid of uh, the helper bar. Uh, to do this, select them, uh, one of the circles, and then basically um, you have to click a second time to select only the helper portion of it. Uh, once you select it, go to fill and then make it uh, no fill or white. Um, I would also like the outline um, to be there. So what I would do is um, I will have a really light outline, gray outline there um, for my purpose. Okay, so now I have the chart as what I need. And now um, another step here is actually compared to what we have here is to add a labeling for the departments. So this part, I've tested a few methods and I feel actually just for the purpose of efficiency, it's best that you just add a text box that corresponds to each of the bars um, and then make it static for your bar. So, I will just basically do that for my bar. Um, and then one good thing about it is that I can group them. I can group them to be one single set of data so that when I move them, I move them together. And then that best uh, retains my format uh, clarity. Yeah, so let's say this is pretty much what we want. And then the last step that we need to do is to um, change the chart title. So um, let's say we want to uh, change the chart title to Q1 performance score, performance score card. Um, and then again, customize to the format that you need and then make sure you have all your parts um, and the chart selected. And then basically you can just go back to your dashboard and then copy it there. And then it's gonna be perfectly fitting. And then next step is just to move it around, uh, make sure you adjust the fund and everything properly. And then just make sure that it fits properly into your chart, into your dashboard. Yeah. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and I'm gonna show you how to replicate this easily for uh, your Q2 performance scorecard, okay? because that's a very common uh, request for our dashboards, right? So, okay, so let's say this is our Q1 chart. Let's park that. That's, that's the format we want. We want to do exactly the same thing to Q2. Uh, let's see what's the problem if you just simply replicate it. So you copy this chart um, and then just copy it down here. And then let's say you drag, um, you, you click on this and then you drag your data down. You see the problem here? Like it's just automatic go, but goes back to the original data set which you don't want. You actually want it to be just the set, the format that you have spent so much time doing um, to be that. So how do we do that? To do that, go back to your original chat that you have pro uh, formatted properly that you love, you wanna continue to use it. Right click, save as template, and then it's gonna be saved in somewhere in under Microsoft template charts. And then let's say we name it our uh, read L, is it read, no, 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 read L bar chart. Let's say this is template that we want, save it. And then what you do uh, in your next chart, let's say this is the next set of chart that you want. Uh, you want it to be Q2, it's in an uh, undesirable format. Uh, don't worry, select the chart, go to change chart type, go to template. You have the readout template selected, done. And then the format, the data is in exactly the data format that you want. The only thing is the title is not in the same format, but that can be easily changed uh, to what you need. Here we go. So that's a, like how you produce the Q2 uh, 
uh, perform a scorecard in basically a couple clicks. And then again, I what I really love about this is it's dynamic. Let's say you want to change to 75, uh, you want to change uh, the sales operations to 90, you see or like 100, you see like the data just changes automatically. Um, and one more thing I wanna mention about um, basically how you set your helper as is basically you kind of like need to prepare for the design of how your chart looks like before uh, you create the helper uh, lines. So for example, the reason I put 150 as my full score is that I want to show my tags. I want to show the name of my departments here so that I actually want to make sure this part of my chart is blank so I can show the data. So let's say if I, let's try to say if I show my data as the full score as 100%, which means that, for example, uh, my sales operation gets a full score. You see if I copy down the formula, then basically it's gonna show my sales operation has the full score, uh, which is fine if that's what you want, but then um, the implication for that is you kind of have to move your, um, move your labels aside so that you can show the data properly. So the reason that I choose to have 150 is that I know my data are not gonna be more than uh, 125 percent, uh, 125 score, so I can keep this part clean for my purpose. And then same thing, you just copy this into your performance scorecard and format it properly. Um, and then you can just present it to your boss. <laughs> okay, so that is everything that I wanna to cover today. So hope that you find it helpful. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you like it. If you have any question, please leave me a comment and I will talk to you very soon.